Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we are going to sheathe the roof. So let's just jump right into it. You'll notice that I am wearing fall protection. This tends to be controversial and I am not sure why. I will be completely honest. Only in the last maybe four or five years have I gotten serious about wearing fall protection. Not because it, I was cavalier, but usually we could put staging at the eaves. As you can see, we could not do that in this case. We did not have access to the back of this house. That meant a harness and a lifeline. I will put the information in the description below. I am a huge fan of Super Anchor Safety products. Um, they're just like two and a half hours north of us. So we've gone up to visit them, get trained, see how they do their testing, etc. For some reason here on YouTube, a little bit less so on Instagram, at least people who follow and comment. Fall protection seems to be super controversial, and I don't understand why. First of all, none of us really are huge fans of wearing a harness and lifeline. Let's just be honest. Uh, even, even people that have to do it every day in commercial or in unions, you do it, but it's not like you're looking forward to it, right? So I think we can all agree on that. A common misconception about wearing personal fall protection, the harness and lifeline, is that it means that you're not a man because you're not walking the roof without the safety. Or they think that it has something to do with the slope of the roof. But here in the US, OSHA requirements kick in at six feet. Here in Washington state, they kick in at four feet if you're on a, on a platform 45 inches by 45 inches or larger. Now that doesn't mean you have to wear a harness and rope. It just means you have to have some form of fall protection. So it could be guardrails, it could be baker scaffolding or something else. Um, oftentimes you'll see that we use guardrails and it's a lot easier. Can't do it in this case. So let me just explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. One of the pieces of fall protection training that I received through Super Anchor Safety is to, whenever possible, stay in fall restraint. What that means is, is that you own, like where my rope is connected, you can kind of see it there behind me, that that length, I can't go off the roof. Now, I'm going to be honest, I need to buy some 30-foot lifelines because this 50-foot has too much slack hanging off the end of the roof. I have a temporary anchor that slings around the ridge. It has a chafe guard on it, and I'm connected to it in the middle. You can see it here. So my lifeline is connected to the ridge, which is a rated temporary anchor. Then it's connected to me through the harness, the body harness, at my D-ring between my shoulder blades. Additionally, I have a decelerator that's, well, so let me, let me back up. I have a decelerator attached to the D-ring. The rope then attaches to the decelerator by means of the carabine. No metal parts there, and it's a pressic knot on the lifeline. It's ultra lightweight, no metal parts banging against me. Now, as I mentioned, I'm staying in fall restraint. So you'll notice where my hand is at, I can adjust the length of the rope. And then the excess goes over the eaves. By staying in fall restraint, I cannot fall off the eaves. Now, one thing I'd like to address is, it's entirely possible to fall off the rake edge. There, the far edge, or in the near edge as we go up. By raked edge, I mean the trim, so on the left there. But when you fall anywhere on this roof, gravity is going to pull you in a straight line down toward the eaves, and that's why our rules allow us to stay in fall restraint. Additionally, when I'm packing these sheets, I can't adjust the rope as we go up and down. And that is why training is paramount. Very, very, very rarely does somebody go off the rake edge. You literally have to walk off while you're facing it, or you have to back off of it, both of which are extremely uncommon. Now, the reason I say that is because no fall protection or safety plan is perfect. We can't completely eliminate the risk. Uh, we could if we had guardrails up the edge and at the eaves, you know, up the raked edge. That would eliminate it. But you factor in time, expense, etc. So you could make that personal decision. But when we wear a harness, because humans are wearing the harness, you can't, you can't take out the fact that we're imperfect. Okay? So we're doing the best we can. It's a little bit like driving a car. Just because you're wearing a seatbelt and have an airbag does not mean that we can avoid all accidents. But what we're doing is we're trying to minimize the harm from those accidents. Okay, let me get off my soapbox. Now, what I'm showing here is the fact that yes, when you're dealing with a lifeline and a harness, it's a little more exhausting. It's not as bad as you think once you get used to it, but you kind of have to learn a workflow. 
part of that workflow is slowing down a little bit. You can't just run around and throw sheets. Also, you try not to spin around often because then your rope twists. So you, try, you kind of get used to just going in the same direction. Earlier in the video, you saw that I was nailing sheets off as I went. That was because, I don't really know why that was, <laughs> I'll just be honest. I don't know why I was doing that. What I tend to do is lay sheets, tack them, and then nail them off while I'm waiting for the cut man to cut me a piece. I don't know why I was nailing as I went, I really don't. This is my preference. Now personally, I don't think it matters. I've had people argue with me that you should nail as you go, and I've had people argue with me that you should tack them and then nail them all at once. Who cares? I'm just gonna, who cares? I'm kinda sick of arguing. I'm, I'm not a young man anymore. <laughs> That's a young man's game. Anyway, so you can tell, this is a 712 roof, by the way. Well, actually a little less. Earlier in this video, you could see that we had rafters over the vaulted living room. So they went from the lower floor up to this second floor where those blocks are at. I had to calculate the run and the rise to make sure that the rafters landed right on that wall where the blocks are at. So that really gave us like a 29.16 degree slope. I just round it up and call it a 712. So the nice thing about a 712 is that it's pretty easy to walk. At 812 and above, typically you get an upcharge from the roofers. So wherever possible, hey, here's here's the big trick <laughs> or big tip. Change your slopes to 8, from 812 to 712 if you can. That's what we do because we can. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is, on the right-hand side, Noah is set up over the garage where he has sheathing scattered, so he's got a safe surface. His job is to cut me pieces. My job is to pack all of the sheathing and then nail it off. The nail gun that I'm using is the Max High Pressure Coil Framing Nailer. Here, let's say that 20 times fast. It's a coil framing nailer. It's high pressure, meaning that I'm running about 280 PSI. It takes a special compressor. I'll link to it below. There's a discount code if you buy this through Tool Barn, by the way. I like to use the coil framing nailer because I can hold more nails, and it's a lightweight gun because it's high pressure. The components can be smaller. Oh, hey, by the way, there is another annoyance about a rope and harness and hose. It's the nature of it. Yes, it's true. You can trip over the cords. You can trip over the hoses. You can even see my rope is a little twisted up. That's okay. By the way, I'm snapping lines over that block line so that I can nail it. We always have to fasten our roof diaphragm or the sheathing to bird blocks and any blocking that's called out. Same thing up at the ridge. We talked about that in the last video. Anyway, look, I've, I've, I've turned around just like I was just telling you not to do. It happens. So I'm just going to take care of it. One of the advantages of tacking sheets and not nailing as you go is that you're not dealing with the hose. Now, I have my lifeline attached at the ridge, but I've added extra hose so my hose can come up from the eaves, and it's one less thing to trip on up above. You just have to learn to be careful. Is, is it a good reason not to use fall protection because you can trip on the rope? No, because we could trip on hoses, and we're not hand nailing our sheathing, right? That's my thinking. Everybody can do things their own way. I really couldn't care less what anyone else does. This is working well for us. We get to go home safe at night. We burn a little bit more energy. I'll just be completely honest. It's not the most fun to work all the day. That's why I say Super Anchor Safety. This is not sponsored. I love those guys. I know them personally. Their stuff just works for us and has for many, many years. I'm sure there's other companies that do as well. This has just been really good for us. I attach my Badger tool bags right to, it's the Deluxe 3D harness, by the way. I can attach my bags right to that. It takes just a second to pop them off the Velcro, and there we go. I have to say, I think I've said this in previous videos, it is not my favorite thing to frame rake walls, put the overhangs on and all that good stuff. But when we get to this point, my favorite thing in the world is the fact that all of the rake walls were framed. The overhangs were done. All we had to do was get up here, snap a line for our first row and just go. And we're not, and well, that's not true. I did add lookouts, you can see those. So that's not the most fun, but not that big of a deal. Especially if you plan for it. 
by this point, this was like one of the first 75 degree days. And so you know that means it's more like 85 degrees on the roof. My giant hydro flask, I think I drank twice. Packing all of these sheets by myself, I was exhausted. It's not that it's the hardest work, it's just that it's hot. Looks like Noah's bebop and scatting over there. <laughs> I wonder what he was listening to. Oh man, I was in my own world. By the time I got to these last two rows, my shoulders were starting to cramp, my forearms were starting to cramp, and it was, now it's just a slog fest, let's just get it done. I had really thought this was only gonna take us to lunch. I think we started at 6.30, I figured we'd be leaving by 12. It was like 2.30 or 3. Whatever, it's done. That's how life goes sometimes, right? One thing too, you'll see it as we get closer to the top. We try to lay out our sheathing to put the rip at the bottom and end with the forefooter at the top. Mostly so that when we get to the top, we don't have to stop while somebody's rip sheathing. I don't know, it, and it doesn't matter. It's just a personal preference. But we also have to divide out the sheathing so that that first rip or last rip, whatever you want to do, is not smaller than two feet. Per the manufacturers, we need our sheets to be wide enough and so we, we aim. Sometimes, let's just say it's some bizarre number. Subtract out however many rows you think by four, four feet. Divide the remaining. So let, let's just say the remaining is six foot two. Just divide that in half. And that way, you, well, that would, that's not a good example. When you have a four footer and a two foot two. <laughs> let's just say that it's five foot six. You could do a two foot and a three foot six, or you could divide them out. But anyway, the point, that's not a good example either. You know what I'm trying to say, even if I can't seem to say it? You know, a professional would cut that part out of the voiceover. Actually, as I think about it, the five foot six is a good example. We would not want to go four foot and then one foot six. We would want to do like two foot and three foot six, like I mentioned, or just divide it in. Five foot six is what, 66? So you could do two, <clears throat> you could do two 33 inch pieces. <laughs> A couple other things to just mention. This is probably old knowledge to most of you. Our engineer, and if you look at the APA instructions, we want our sheets staggered by four feet. So you place a four footer, then an eight footer, and that way they're staggered like a checkerboard. I guess would be one way to look at it. The other thing I wanted to mention, and there is a discount code in the description. This full disclosure, I do paid partnership with TrueWork. I can't not work in TrueWork. Is that how you say it? I have to work in true work here. The long sleeve shirt, you could not have convinced me that I could stay cool in long sleeve shirts when I was younger. It had to be shirts off or tank tops, right? You stay cooler with a sun shirt, long sleeve. And these, um, I forget what it is, the B1 sun hoodie. Ultra lightweight, it has the hood so you're keeping the sun off your neck. I have to wear a hat. Ever, probably, I think I started that when I was like 18 or 19. I just have to wear a hat. Wear the right clothes, and the heat is much more manageable. Of course, drink enough water. Back to the fall protection. Yep, you see the air hose is far to the left. I don't have to worry about tripping on that. You have to worry about tripping on the lifeline. And now that I'm back to the middle, I always have to stop, make sure I move it so that it goes over the top of the sheet. And when I lay it, it's not in the way. I know some guys on Instagram that have posted pictures of where they nailed their sheet down with the rope there. <laughs> that has not yet happened to me. I'm sure that it will. Honestly, it's more likely to happen if we had two people up here, but we have one. Because then, then we can go a little faster with two people. By the way, when you have two people, here's what we like to do. We like to run one gun on the left, one nail gun on the right, poses from the eaves, and then each person has their quadrant. They would stay from half left or from half right. And that way your lifelines are not being tangled with each other. That's worked really well for us. And I'll be able to show that in future videos. The other thing to mention is, yep, this is great to get you ready for hiking because <laughs> we don't hike with full sheets of zip half inch sheeting. These Keen Utility boots or shoes, work shoes, super, super grippy. So whatever brand you choose to use, when you find a good grippy pair of shoes, and the zip is pretty grippy itself too, especially in the heat. It grips really well. Whatever shoe you wear, I used to wear skate shoes like Etnies. Just dedicate a pair for roof work. 
because when you have confidence in your footwear, you can work more safely, you can work with, with more confidence, get more done. Shoes go a long way. I'm a big fan of wedge soles, but they don't do that well on the roof if they have like the normal vibrant sole that you see on a lot of wedge soles. And I'm talking like Red Wing, Thorough Good, I've had Danner Bull Runs. They don't, they just, the, there's something about that Vibram that doesn't stick that well on the roof. At least for me, I don't have a lot of confidence in it. I like a low top that's grippy, so a good skate shoe is almost always the shoe. I know guys, I used to work with a guy that, and like up to 10, 12, he could walk in a pair of air walks. Um, I did okay. <laughs> I was never that good. Right there, you could hear the last nail come skittering down the roof. That means I had to go all the way back to the bottom, get a coil. And I think you could tell by how slow I was moving, I was getting tired. This last row, I was tired. But we're on the home stretch. Originally, I really thought we were going to get this sheeted early and taped. It was like, no way. I know it's not that much work, and there's a lot of you younger, younger framers that might be watching this and laughing. But just wait till you're 44. You'll probably still do a lot better than I am. <laughs> I'll just say it. Ah, whatever. Whatever. When you get to be my age, you don't care what people think. Last Except row. your mom. You still care what my mom thinks, right? Oh, yeah. And maybe. Control nope, that's about training. it. Oh, yeah, my wife. I, I care what they think. The Enough shenanigans. Okay, speed it up, because I don't think you want to watch this in real time any more than I do. Okay, so the rope is set. Again, fall restraint. You can also see that area to the left where we staged everything. It was great. So those middle sheets at that middle ridge, kind of where Noah's at, yeah, I'm taking a break. I was white. Man, I was white. But anyway, I could take the harness, or I could disconnect from the rope on those sections because I had nowhere to fall. So that illustrates if we can put a platform at the end of our eaves, then we can eliminate wearing a harness. It's not always practical to do that. Yeah, I was really knackered, as they say. Is that what they say? <laughs> so. Hey, I try to leave in as much of this stuff as I can here on the channel. Um, I don't show all of the stupid things I do or all of my failings, but I try to show most of them because it's real life. It's like, yeah, my forearms were really cramping by that point. I thought I drank enough water, but I don't know. I'm not complaining about it. This is just the reality. I don't know how a lot of you do it when it gets a whole lot hotter in other parts of the country. Good for you. I just Here in Washington, we handle rain. We don't, we don't handle warm temperatures. One thing that's really nice about the sling style temporary anchors is it wraps the ridge, goes through a loop, and it has a chafe guard. So I can leave that up there in case I need to get back up there. But generally, I don't need to. Uh, you'll notice that we don't, we're not cutting in any roof vents. We're not going to do that because we have ridge vent, and all of the like bathroom fans are going to come out gables. We do everything possible to avoid vents on the roof, just because then nobody needs to get up there. They don't have, the roofers don't have to deal with it, etc., etc. But I can leave the chafe guard or the uh, temporary anchor up there and the rope in case I do need to get back up there. We're going to need it for siding. We still have to tape the roof, which I'm going to get into here in just a minute. But can we just appreciate it? it's the last? <laughs> so. By the way, the rake wall there in the foreground, earlier in the videos, that was built and set off to the side before we hit even frames the floor and then extended. Okay, so that was the end of Friday. Come Monday, we need to tape this roof. So again, this is sponsored content. I do We do work for Huber Engineered Woods, the makers of Advantech and Zip System roof and wall sheathing. So I'm just being fully transparent about that. I like to install the eaves metal so that I can tape it. It's one less thing that the roofers have to deal with. You'll notice that the main roof here is fully sheathed. We still need to overframe the roof. But I've, I've already spotted where my soffit and fascia are gonna line up. And I went ahead and cut that actually worked out pretty good. I'm going to tape this roof to wall because I know that I'm going to roll the tape. 
Now, our roofers do an outstanding job. We've gone through the literature with them. They prefer to tape valley metal than to run ice and water. And we're in a wet climate, but we're not in a cold climate, so we don't need ice and water at our valleys. I'll show you that here in just a minute. When we're taping the roof, we're just taping from the bottom up. So the four foot vertical seams, let's call them, we tape those, we cover it with the left to right, the horizontal seams, and then the same. Now, ultimately, it doesn't really matter, except that we do want the warranty. But you'll notice that all of these horizontal seams, they're what we call self-terminating flashing. So water doesn't run down the roof, hit the seam on the tape, and then, then get behind it, as long as we roll it. So we're going to go ahead and set all of the tape, and then we're going to come through and we're going to roll all of it. Now we're, we're dried in. That means once we hang windows, you know, all the trades can come in. We've done this in the wintertime with snow on the roof, snow melts, and we didn't have any leaks. The only time we found leaks was at the ridge where we temporarily taped it, and we think it was birds walking. But we left it for like two months before we had the roofing installed. We just couldn't get the other trades in. We wanted their penetrations through the roof, if any. Like, um, for example, the penetrations that we will have through the roof are the vents for the plumbing. And we just couldn't get everybody in. They were so busy. This was a couple years back. So anyway, that's just our personal experience. Like I said, this is sponsored content, so take that for what it's worth. We've been using Zip System since 2008, 2009, sorry, fall of 2009. And we've been in a partnership with them since 2000, I think the end of 2019. So take that for what it's worth. Again, see, Lifeline is up there. This is why I need a 30-footer, so that I don't have the excess hanging off the eaves. But I run the tape out, I smooth it with my hand, and then I run it in about three-foot sections. This keeps it straight. It's the most productive way I've done to it. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to roll all of it. You have to roll this tape to get the warranty and so that the acrylic adhesive fully bonds to the panels. They're designed to work together and they work really well. When you're rolling the tape, it's a whole lot easier to put a painter's pole and screw it into the handle of the roller. I like to use a fiberglass one because they last a little longer than the wood ones. I can stay upright at this point. I think it goes a little faster upright. Make sure that you fully roll the tape. We want the warranty. If you're gonna go to all this extra work, then let's just do it right. Even down below the roof to wall at the garage to that rake wall is tape. And we are donezo. However, in the next video, we're gonna overframe that back roof to the lower left there. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We will see you in the next video.